City Travel with Kids podcast, helping you plan big city trips with kids. Brought to you by Little City Trips. Hello, and thank you for joining us for this week's City Travel with Kids podcast. I am your host, Marta, and today we're talking all about Sydney, Australia. Today, I'm joined by my co-host, Kerry Hedrick. Hi, Kerry, how are you today? And I am where very are well, you, thank you. Where are you joining us from? Um, I'm actually in Bali this week rather than Abu Dhabi, and then we'll, we'll shortly be on our way down to Perth, so jet-setting around a bit this summer. Oh, wow, that's amazing. I'd love to go to Bali. It's just one of these destinations that just looks so beautiful and relaxing. It is indeed. We're having a great time. Oh, I'm really jealous. <laughs> So today we are going to be hearing all about Sydney. Now, I have never made it to Australia, but Kerry, surely as an Australian, you have. Yes, definitely. Several times as a child and as an adult, I have made it to Sydney. And last summer, which was the Australian winter, my kids made it to Sydney for the first time. And it's definitely been one of their travelling highlights. I think um, the first time they set their eyes on what they called the Sydney Opera Bridge, it, it absolutely made them made their trip. So it's definitely one of those iconic and beautiful cities that everyone has to visit. Oh, wow. Yeah, even just in photo, it looks amazing. I always think like, oh, you know, Sydney Hartmore must be incredible in real life. Now, before we get on to our Sydney episode and meet this week's guest, uh, you know that each week on our podcast, we'd like to highlight a question or a discussion from our City Travel with Kids Facebook group that we think would be useful to our podcast listeners. So, Kerry, you have the question with you. Uh, can you share today's question with us? Sure. I'm going to London with my three-year-old and a new baby. It's our first trip as a family, and I'm wondering whether we should book a hotel or would an Airbnb be better? Oh, that's a great question. Yeah. Yeah, it, you know, it's a real toss up for me when you get to these big, busy cities where hotel rooms are actually quite small. I think when you've got one child, you can get away with a hotel room still. But as soon as you've got a second or third child, Airbnb start to become a, a more practical option for families. Yeah, I agree. I find that often having your own space and your own, you know, kitchen and separate rooms, how you get in an Airbnb always makes a big difference. Uh, you know, like in the evening, if they can settle in their own space and you can just relax, maybe in a living room or just a separate space, really, that, you know, that can make the holiday much more relaxing. For me, it certainly depends how many days, too. Like, I don't mind sharing a, a big room of all of us if it's just for a couple of days. But if you're going to be awake in a city, then definitely having that ability to close the door on the children is fabulous. Definitely. Yes, I agree. Yeah, for a weekend, I think often, you know, a hotel is easier. You don't have to worry about keeping it up. So, yes, but it's a good question. And I think it comes up on, you know, with very many destinations. So I'm, I'm happy it was asked. OK, and now let's focus on this week's destination city which is Sydney. Sydney is the largest Australian city and also has one of the world's most iconic skylines. It's the perfect city for your outdoorsy and adventure seeking family with good public transport systems and an abundance of parks, beaches and playgrounds. Earlier this week, Marianne sat down with our Sydney expert Shona from Hello Sydney Kids to find out everything we need to know about planning a city trip to Sydney. Before we hear the interview, I just want to remind you that if you want to be kept up to date with all our latest episodes, then don't forget to subscribe to our podcast. And if you have any questions about Sydney after listening to today's episode or you have any other family travel questions, you can come and chat to us in our Facebook group, City Travel with Kids. We would love to see you there. You can also find lots of information about Sydney on our family travel guide on the Little City Trips website. And finally, I want to let you know that you will be able to find a copy of our show notes from today's episode on our website at littlecitytrips.com forward slash podcast. And we will link to any relevant and useful information mentioned in today's interview there. So without further ado, let's pass over to Marianne and Shona to hear all about Sydney. Today I am joined by Shauna Smith, who runs the website Hello Sydney Kids, which she set up in 2011. Prior to working online, Shauna was the author of several books, including Sydney for Under Fives. Now don't be fooled by Shauna's Scottish accent. She has lived in Sydney for 20 years, and as she has four children, now aged between 13 and 22, I feel pretty confident that there's nobody better to talk to us today about planning a trip to Sydney with kids. 
Now, as some of our listeners will know, I also live in Sydney, but I have only lived here for less than a year now. So I'm hugely looking forward to today's chat and to learning more about what I can do with my kids here. So let's welcome Shauna. Hi, Shauna. Um, Thank you so much for joining me today. It's a pleasure. Very happy to speak to you. So why don't you start off by telling us a bit about yourself and your family and a bit more about your Sydney experience so far. Okay, so I arrived in Sydney with number one son when he was a toddler. Um, He was about 18 months old when we arrived in Sydney. And then we have had three more children whilst living in the city. But I remember turning up in Sydney with my oldest son. And even though I had lived there before when I was young, free and single, When I arrived with a baby, it was like coming to a different city. I thought, what am I going to do? Where am I going to go? And this was quite a long time ago. There were no websites at all and there weren't any books about Sydney. So um, with my very active young son, we set off to find out about all the places which I had never gone to before I had children, let me tell you. (laughs) So my oldest son and I explored Sydney a lot when he was a toddler. And then I had another baby. So there I was with a baby and a toddler and a big pram. And I had to really get to know places where it was safe to go with a baby and toddler. So that kept me pretty busy. And we got to know all the fenced playgrounds, all the beaches that were easy to get to. Um, And then I had a little break. Those boys went off to school and then I had twins. So I sort of started right at the beginning again. And then we went back around all the playgrounds we've been to before, starting again at the playgrounds that are great for kids and all the beaches that are good for little, little kids. And then now we don't go to those places anymore, really. I'm now much more of a going to the places that are good for teenagers, preteens and teenagers. So that's the more adventurous beaches where they can jump off things and uh, run around and where there are playgrounds that have got great equipment for older kids. Awesome. Well, I can't wait to hear all your insider tips. Uh, Now, Sydney often appears on people's bucket lists as it is such a stunning city, isn't it? It is. But as someone who knows the city so well, why do you think Sydney is such a great city to visit with kids? Well, I think it's quite easy to visit with kids in lots of ways because there's so much for them to do. Mm -hmm. There are all the sort of opera house, harbour bridge, museums, that sort of thing. But if you're a family that loves the outdoors, I think Sydney is just the best place to visit because you can absolutely run your kids into the ground on a daily basis. Mm -hmm. There are so many different beaches to go to and they're pretty easy to get to as well. Um, There are so many nice places to stay as well. But I I think that for the outdoors family, it's absolutely fantastic place to visit. And it is so beautiful. So that as you're traveling around or as you're sitting whilst your kids play, you can just drink in the views with your coffee in hand. And really, I think it's a very uplifting sort of place. Yeah, and I agree. We are just loving the outdoor life here. Mm. Okay, so how about um, some of the important things we need to know before we go? Is there any any, uh, good information you can give us, like best time to visit, any safety issues? Yes, so I think that the winter in Sydney, although we people who live here in Sydney love the winter, especially if you're from Europe, because the uh, winter here is rather like the summer in the north of Europe. Um, But I don't know whether I would recommend people to come here in July if they love the beach, then probably a warmer time of year is a better time to come. Mm -hmm. The other thing, I know loads of people get holidays over Christmas, New Year and January, but the cost goes up so significantly that if I was going to Sydney on holiday, I'd be trying to avoid Christmas, New Year and January, maybe the second half of January, certainly the middle of December. These can be great times weather wise without the astronomical costs, because the peak season is over Christmas, New Year and the first half of January. And it's extortionate compared to coming at another time. Uh And it's super busy as well, isn't it? If you go to the beach. Yeah, yeah. Super busy. And I have to say, and I don't know whether you would agree or not, but as a tourist coming with kids and going to see the um, midnight fireworks or even the nine o'clock fireworks is quite daunting, I think, because it is so busy. So I think if I had really young children, I might just avoid that. The kids have to be quite um, tough to be able to stay up late and deal with the fireworks and deal with the crowds. Uh And I I was really surprised how busy the beaches get as well over those school holidays. It's like everyone spends all the time at the beach, don't they? Yeah, yeah. And Easter can be really chockers and so can, um, you know, the other public holidays. So, I mean, there are quieter beaches, as I'm sure you know, that you can go to. But I do try and avoid the 
most popular beaches. Mm -hmm. um, but things also to think about, I think the number one thing is there's a lot of stuff you don't need to worry about. You don't need to worry about spiders, sharks and crocodiles <laughs> and the reason or snakes. The reason I say that is really, although they are dangerous and they can kill you in real terms, they're just not an issue right nobody has been killed by shark in sydney for many years and the people who have been injured all around the coast are, are mainly surfers who are out at dawn and dusk i have had people getting in touch with me who are genuinely scared of spiders and snakes but for tourists in sydney you will not see them except at the zoo mm -hmm. um and sharks there are shark proof nets in a lot of the beaches especially the harbour beaches and these are completely enclosed, netted off areas that sharks just can't get into. There are sharks, especially at the harbour. So I think these are great places to swim. And um, they're also good places for kids to run around and jump into the water on. Mm -hmm. So they're a real feature of the harbour beaches in Sydney. And um, it's, you know, you can know that you're absolutely safe when you're swimming inside those. So that's good. Yeah. And I think, like you say, there, there hasn't been any shark attacks for a long time, no. but it just does give you that extra peace of mind that your kids are going to be safe. It does. And then safety on the ocean beaches. It's very, very important to keep yourself and the kids swimming between the flags because that's where the lifeguards are and they are placed in places where there are no currents and no rips and no dangerous surf. And it's really important to stay within those. And a great pleasure for people coming to Sydney is seeing the ocean pools, which are free and at the side of most of the beaches. And these are great big concrete or built into the rocks, 25 to 50 metres swimming pools. They often have children's pools alongside and they're great places to splash and play for kids. And you definitely know there are no sharks there too. <laughs> yeah, and they're saltwater pools, aren't they? Saltwater pools, yeah, they're tidal pools. Yeah, no, they're very cool. Okay, great. Should we get into the fun stuff? Yes! Let's talk about all... Oh, well, um, I think a lot of people use Sydney as a starting point to explore yeah. more of Australia. So yeah. let's imagine that we only have three days in the city. What are some right. of the must-do things we shouldn't miss? If we just had three days in Sydney with, say, primary school aged children who could do a bit of walking, I would suggest um, day number one, straight down to the Harbour Bridge and to the Opera House for a good look around there. If you've got a good budget, then you could actually do the bridge climb mm -hmm. um, if your kids are a bit older that's great if they're pretty young then just walking over the bridge is great or part of it and going up the pylon lookout is really good and then walking around to the opera house I think is a must do um, even even with kids they do find it quite spectacular and running up and down the steps is good fun uh -huh. and then um possibly from there go over to the zoo if, to make it a really big day and um, if you like zoos then getting over there um, on a day when it's not too hot is really good and you can get the ferry over from Circular Quay and spend at least half a day over there so that would be a very busy day but you'd have got the best of the views I would uh -huh. say. And it is a fabulous zoo isn't it? I think it's just marvellous um, they do a lot of great work there but it's the views and all the animals and that fantastic playground there as well. Mm -hmm. And the, you know, the floating above it on the sort of sky train thing. We really like that as well. Yeah. Um, so on day number two or any day when the weather was not so good, um, I would head off to Darling Harbour and then pick from all the delights that are there. So we have the Maritime Museum, which is one of my favourite places. And Australia is a maritime nation and its uh, history, the maritime history is really well explained there. And a lot about ocean animals is explained there. It's very good. You get to explore the ships as well, don't and you? And go in a submarine. submarine. Yeah. the kids are old enough. Mine used to love that. Yeah, my kids love <laughs> the submarine. Yeah, they're great. And the old ships there as well are really interesting. Uh -huh. Um, if you haven't gone over to Turonga Zoo, then a little look at Wildlife Sydney is there. It's much smaller than the zoo, but it is all enclosed. So on a wet day, it might be a better idea. It's right beside the aquarium, which I really love. And yeah. I've been there loads of times, but I still love it because there's nothing as exciting as seeing a shark fly over <laughs> your head by a ray. And the ex exhibits are very good there. Madame Tussauds is also there. There are dozens of different restaurants to choose from. And after 
all that sort of sightseeing. I think a little quiet time at the Chinese gardens is lovely. Mm -hmm. And then a long sit down whilst the children play at the wonderful, wonderful playground in Darling Harbour. Yeah, it's a good one, isn't it? My kids love that playground. Yeah, yeah. And you could stay there and have dinner. So that could easily take up a whole day and parents will certainly be exhausted at the end of that. So so for a third day, I think getting out of the middle of town is really good and going off to the beach to either the bus down to Bondi and then walk down to Coogee and get the bus home. And if you're there on in warm weather, then definitely take your swimmers and have a couple of swims at the beaches and play at the playgrounds. Uh, that, which beach along there would you recommend most? Well, Bronte, probably. Uh-huh. I mean, it all depends on the ages of the kids, but Bondi, icebergs, pool, I adore. Mm-hmm. And swimming at Bondi is lovely too. If the kids can walk all that way, that's great. But you can do it with two people with a pram is OK as well. But I think either stopping and getting the bus back at Bronte or Fuji makes a fantastic day out. Mm -hmm. Um, If the kids are a bit older and you like snorkeling, then Gordon's Bay is superb because it's so sheltered and so clear. So there's a lot of options down there. But I'm from the North Shore and I do love the North. So I'd actually, rather than go to the eastern suburbs, the ferry to Manly is what I would recommend people to do. Because you get to see the harbour, the journey over is lovely. And then once you're in Manly, you can walk over to the ocean beach and walk up the promenade to the left up to uh, Queenscliff and then walk all the way back and go to Shelley Beach down at the southern end, which is very sheltered, has the most excellent fish life and a great cafe there too. And you pass beautiful fairy bower on the way. So I think that's a wonderful day out in itself. And obviously fish and chips are essential at Uh the end. So that third day, whereas I would say go off to the beach, but if the weather's not great or you're here in a colder time of year or you just don't like beaches, then there are plenty of museums as an alternative. Mm -hmm. For example, the Australian Museum, the Museum of Sydney, they're both very good. And then Susanna Place Museum is much more of a sort of people's museum and tells the story of the ordinary working people. Oh, I've of, not heard of that one. It's one of the Sydney Living Museums and it's um, you have to book to go on a tour through it, but it's great for kids. OK. So I think at the end of that three days, you'd need to go off and have a holiday somewhere. <laughs> yeah, I think you would. And what about if we had longer than three days? What, yeah. other, what other attractions or day trips would you add to that? Yeah. I have to say, if people have got longer than three days, it might be a good idea to go and stay at the beach. So either stay in the eastern suburbs or stay at Manly or just north of Manly and then do day trips into the city and spend more time just living at the beach. Uh-huh. So doing normal beachy things, which are so pleasant, like just going to the the playgrounds and going to the rock pools and then you know a day trip to Pam Beach which you can do on the bus is fantastic or a day trip down to La Perouse where you can there are beautiful beaches and a bit of history down there they're also good but probably I'd also recommend a day trip to the Blue Mountains uh-huh. which is a really long day like it's 10 to 11 hours But if you go on an organised tour, you don't have to worry about anything. You just get taken up there and can see some of that beautiful landscape up there and visit Scenic World, which, as long as it's not too busy, is really exciting for kids. Because it's it's got super funicular, steep railways and this skyway as well, where you float above and walk around in the rainforest. So I think those are really good, except when there are huge queues, when it's not much fun at all. Yeah, so avoid school holidays, probably. Yeah, or try and get there earlier or talk to the tour company and just see how busy it's going to be. Mm -hmm. Um, Also, you can do Janolan Caves and the Blue Mountains in one day. So if you're interested at all in caves, that's a big day out, but really exciting. Okay. If you have teenagers, so I'm in that teenager mode at the moment, but there are some terrific things to do like kayaking on Sydney Harbour. Mm -hmm. Um, There are lots of shopping opportunities, of course, that teenagers might like to do themselves, like the markets at Bondi or the markets at Paddington. Um, There's also canyoning in the Blue Mountains, which I think teenagers would really 
love and it would be quite challenging. Yeah, that sounds amazing. Maybe when my kids are a bit older. Yes. <laughs> okay, and how about getting around all these places? Like you say, we yeah. can get the bus out to Bondi, we can get the ferry to Manly. How about generally getting around Sydney? How easy is that? Well, it's pretty easy by public transport mm -hmm. and it's pretty difficult by car, I would say. <laughs> so unless you really want a car and you're going to go off somewhere else, I wouldn't have a car if you're staying in the middle of Sydney. Maybe if you're staying out in the suburbs, possibly. But I think you're better just to use the ferries, the trains, and the buses. Uh -huh. mm. And how stroller friendly is it? Pretty stroller friendly, not too bad. The buses are pretty good generally and the trains are as well in most stations. And there's an app and you can check the stroller friendliness of each of the stations. The ferries are all good. The buses are generally good. Obviously, it's much easier with a stroller if you've got two people. But Australians are very friendly. So anywhere I've been with a stroller, and I've had twins in strollers, it's been pretty heavy going at times. I've just asked people to help me. Even going, I don't know if you've taken a stroller up over the Harbour Bridge, but there's quite a lot of steps there. But people have always helped me okay. when I've done it. People are really helpful. Uh -huh. It's good to know. And how about um, purchasing tickets for the attractions that you mentioned, like the zoo or the aquarium? Are we better to book in advance? Can we book when yeah. we get there? Well, you can book when you get there, but I think it's probably better to pick up some of the um, three-in-one tickets where you can get entry to a few different items. If you're there at all during school holidays or busy holiday periods, it's better to book your spot okay. um, and book ahead, I would say. If you're there in a quieter time of year, you wouldn't have to worry about it. Do you agree? Marianne? Yes, yes, no, I do agree. I do. And yeah. especially during school holidays where places like the aquarium at Darling Harbour can have huge queues. So I definitely think, yes, it's definitely worth booking ahead if you can. What I do find interesting is a lot of places in the world, if you turn up early, you tend to avoid the crowds. Whereas I find in Australia, Australians get up very early. So actually, mm -hmm. when you go early, it tends to be busier. And I find a lot of these attractions kind of get a bit quieter around lunchtime. Uh, yeah, because the little kids go to sleep, don't they, yeah. to get taken home. Yep. Okay, let's talk about the layout of the city then and best, yep. best areas for families to stay. Stay, yeah. And uh, also if you have any specific recommendations for family-friendly hotels. Yeah, so there are four main areas that I think are great for families to stay in. And I'll start off with what I think is the most family-friendly. Um, there are lots of hotels and apartments around Darling Harbour where you can easily walk into Darling Harbour. Mm -hmm. And I think that makes a great place to stay if you want to be in the middle of things and you want an urban experience because you will be able to get in and out of Darling Harbour easily, which means there are lots of places to eat and playgrounds really close to hand. And the major attractions are also pretty easy to get to from there. And there's a lot of choice. Yep. But also staying in the city itself can be good. And there are some apartment hotels and also very nice hotels that are there. Now, down in the rocks, there are two different places. At the top end, we've got the Park Hyatt with its fantastic swimming pool. And it will be one of the most expensive places in Sydney. But just up the road from that, also with beautiful views, is the Sydney uh, Youth Hostel. And it has some fantastic family rooms and it's really good value for okay. where it is. So if you can book far ahead, I would really recommend that place. There are uh, also Quest Apartments and Meriton Apartments that are in the city. So they, if you can get a two bedroom apartment, that would be really good. And you can walk to the Botanic Gardens, the Opera House and down to Circular to Key to get the ferry from there. So those are both great places to stay. But if you're able to stay a bit longer and if you love the outdoors and the beach, then staying either at Manly or just north at Queenscliff are really good options. And in that case, there are Airbnbs, of course, and then the Australian equivalent is Home Away Stays, which I find a bit cheaper than Airbnb. So you can find some great apartments on there and houses as well, either on the northern beaches there or on the eastern suburbs beaches around Bondi, Clovelly and Bronte. These are really child friendly suburbs. Uh -huh. And if you were looking for a more typical Aussie beach experience, I would recommend the beaches. Yeah, I guess so. And especially if you're here for a bit longer if you're here for a bit longer yeah mm -hmm. great advice okay so let's talk about eating out with kids in sydney then yeah. are there any particular things we need to know or any specific restaurants we shouldn't miss families will find that in sydney there's a great variety of cuisines available lots of asian food is available like the vietnamese and thai are very popular lots of italian as well is good and there's plenty of greek food and middle eastern food also what's known as modern australian cuisine which is basically very very fresh food served seasonally 
loads of salads. So there's plenty of healthy food for your kids. But if they're like anything like mine, they'll keep asking for fish and chips. <laughs> yeah. One thing I really love about the Australian food is it's uh, very seasonal. Yes. And so everything is fresh. And I think a lot of other countries rely much more on imported food or growing food out of season. Whereas I find Australians are very much about seasonal produce. Yes, they are. They are. And and also with all the waves of immigration that have happened, each wave has brought its own cuisine. So we're really spoiled here. Yeah. And breakfast is a big thing here as well, isn't Huge it? Going, going out for breakfast. Oh, I love going out for breakfast, Me especially too. go out for breakfast, take the children out and then try and get them back inside before it's really, really, really hot. Yeah. OK. And where should we head to? You'll find lots and lots of child friendly places. Um, in and around Darling Harbour. The massive playground there has got um, about five or six restaurants within sight of it. So your children can play in the playground if they're old enough to do that. And you can sit and watch them. So that is one place I would recommend. Some of the cafes down at Darling Harbour are good too. Uh, We always like City Extra, which is open 24 hours a day. So there's nothing particularly for the kids to play in there, but it's in a great position and it's quick at serving the food. So that's good. There are loads of cafes at the beach and beside the beach and with playgrounds beside them. So, for example, down at Manly, there are some, well, lots of cafes right along the beach, which are pretty child friendly. And the same at Bondi and particularly at Bronte and Coochie. There are some fantastic places there. I have an article on my website about great cafes with playgrounds, but these tend not to be in the city centre. They tend to be further out. Sure. Um, But in general, restaurants are very welcoming to children, aren't they? Yes, they are. They they certainly are. Most will have children's menus. Most will have high chairs mm-hmm. and baby change in the changing facilities. Sometimes you do get in the centre of town, you'll find there are cafes that don't actually have a toilet within the cafe, which comes as a shock yes. to people. I just went to the new-ish one called Grounds of the City and it doesn't have a bathroom inside it. So it's not great with young children because you yeah. have to go trailing shopping centre. You have to get a key to get there. often, and don't you? Get a key annoying. and go around the corner to find the yeah. bathroom. Room. can do yeah so that can be pretty irritating uh-huh. I find there are some pretty good places for really nice meals out the Novotel if people are staying in there the Novotel at Darling Harbour is a good spot for families and it's got a great quite posh restaurant in it that is pretty family friendly and I also I have found even eating out uh, in quite fine dining restaurants they're mm. always very accommodating of the children yes um, and I think because babysitting is so expensive in yeah. Sydney especially if you try and book through a hotel we got quoted yes. 50 dollars an hour plus parking <laughs> oh, so awesome. we ended up just extending our table for two to a table of four and taking the kids with us because it was actually yes. cheaper to take them <laughs> and <laughs> we've never found a restaurant that hasn't been welcome of them. No, I think that's right. They are really generally pretty friendly and it's a pretty family friendly city altogether. Yeah. You know. Okay, so what about packing for Sydney? Is there anything we should consider when packing our cases or any particular yes. guidebooks you can recommend we pick up before we go? Well, I think before coming, when you're thinking about packing, if you don't already have the full rashi for your child, then you must get one, either get it as soon as you get here or be prepared and come with them. Can um, you just uh, explain to people explain who might not know rashi what is. a rash is? We call a rash, uh, it's called a rash vest, but what it is, is a sun greening top that children wear over their swimming costumes. Ideally, the sleeve should be long, the neck should be high. Young children can get an all-in-one suit that you zip them into and it's a very some protective material. Also, you get terrific hats, which can get wet and dry out very quickly, that kids can wear when they're swimming, playing in the waves. So those sorts of things are really good. I've got to say that with my four children, it was a battle from start to finish, getting them to keep their hats on at the beach. And I've got loads of photos of my children with no hats on. But the aim is to keep them as covered up as possible and to stop them getting sunburned. Yes. Because it's really strong with the sun here. Even in the winter time, you can easily get sunburned. So that, and then possibly some, uh, what do you call it, stingos, we call it, some cream to rub on if you've got a little bit of a thing, because you can get stung at the beach by little beasties in the water. Um, There are jellyfish which can give you a nasty sting, but you'll know about those when you get to the beach because signs will be up. But sometimes children can get little stings from things, and so some sting cream stuff is good. And, and then, we do, and we do have mosquitoes in the summer as well, don't we? Mosquitoes in the summer at times, yes. 
I do love a breezy evening that blows them away. <laughs> um, <laughs> some light t-shirts and then me, even in the summertime, sometimes you might need a light cardi some evenings. Um, it's worth looking ahead to see what the weather is going to be like. A light raincoat, because it does rain in Sydney. When it rains in Sydney, it can be very hard and we might often prefer staying inside. Um, a light raincoat is a good idea in case it's windy too, or you're on a ferry and it's windy because mm -hmm. the kids can get cold on the ferry. Then guidebooks. I, I don't know that they're really that great. I think that the better information is online, including on the main sydney.com website. It's pretty good. Uh -huh. And Australia.com, those are good websites that are pretty comprehensive. And to find out what's on, then probably Time Out is the best place to find that and just looking at the Opera House website. Yeah, because they, they often have um, good kid-friendly yes. uh, shows, don't they? They do. Um, in the school holidays, there'll always be quite a few good kid-friendly shows, both at the Opera House and at the inner city theatres. Um, outside school holidays, not so much, though. No. And of course, uh, you can bring your stroller because it's easy to get around with. Yeah, especially a, a nice light stroller that you can pick up and fold up. Really very handy. Mm -hmm. And backpacks are good as well uh, for, for little kids, you know, backpacks for walks, because there are so many lovely walks that you can do. And if you're a family that's into walking, you know, I can think of half a dozen walks that you can easily do from the city centre where you will quickly feel as if you're in the wild. Uh -huh. And yeah, and you also mentioned earlier the Bondi to Coogee Walk, which is just fantastic, yes, isn't it? And the Manly yeah. to Shelley Beach. Yeah, yeah, we've really, really enjoyed exploring all the walks here. And you've been up to the lighthouse at Pam Beach, which I think is a fantastic walk. Yes, well. yes, that's beautiful up there, isn't it? Mm. Although I did nearly tread on a snake walking up to the lighthouse. Did but you? But, but <laughs> maybe we shouldn't talk about that. <laughs> <laughs> just when I, but you see, you didn't actually tread on the snake. <laughs> <laughs> no, I didn't. And it was just a tree just snake. <laughs> okay, so we like to finish with our fast five questions questions. Right. Are you ready? Yes. Okay, let's go. Okay, tell us one hidden gem we won't find in the guidebooks. Well, I think that Little Manly Cove is just the most beautiful place. So it is a tiny little beach on the harbour side, a little walk from the ferry at Manly. There's a beautiful cafe there. There's a shark net um, and my kids love leaping from the shark net into the water. The water is shallow and it's pretty safe there. And the views towards the city are just stupendous. So it is a gorgeous spot on the harbour and not many tourists will find it. No, but I'm feeling quite smug because I have actually been there. <laughs> and you think it's just got, I just love that cafe Yeah, there. no, it's lovely. And I, the rock pools at the side are lovely as well. And I used to be able to take all four of my kids on my own and we would have a great time there. Okay, one thing we should splurge on in Sydney. Well, big splurge would be staying at the zoo. Uh, they call it Roar and Snore. So you can stay in tents at the zoo and you do behind the scenes tours at night time and in the early morning. I actually haven't done that and it costs hundreds of dollars per person. So it's a big splurge, but I think it would be fantastic. Yeah, that does sound fun. We haven't done that yet either, but it's definitely on the bucket list. We've done it at Western Plains Zoo and that was really so interesting. You know, so apart from the beauty, it's the behind the scenes at the zoo. It's fascinating. Uh -huh. Okay, one thing we should save our money on then. Well, you know, there are loads of things to do in Sydney that cost no money at all. And those are the beaches, particularly, and the playgrounds. There are fantastic playgrounds and lots of them are close to the beach. So you can have a whole day out in Sydney and it won't really cost you anything. Uh, maybe if you're staying in the city, you could hop on a ferry and go to Watson's Bay or go to Manly, buy an ice cream, <laughs> take your own lunch, and that would be all it costs you. Yeah. Um, I think we should be very proud of ourselves in Sydney that there's so much to do that doesn't cost a penny. The playgrounds are superb. Yes, I no, I agree. It, and beaches and the playgrounds, and you, like you say, you can easily just spend an entire day and not have to spend any money. Mm -hmm. Okay, one cannot live without app. Well, yeah, that's a hard one, actually, because probably it's got to be TripView, which is the public transport app, which once you've got it on your phone and you know how to use it, it's very, very helpful. So it'll tell you all the times the ferries will help you work out buses to get to places. So that's the practical one. But if I can add in another one, of course, the Opera House app is really an interesting one to, to use to find out about the Opera House. Um, and Time Out Sydney is also a pretty handy app as well. 
Okay, great. Oh, and you also mentioned earlier an app that can tell you about being able to take a stroller into the train stations. That's the TripView app. Okay. Pretty sure it's on there. Okay. And finally, where will we get our playground with a coffee and a view? Well, Bondi is the easiest one to get to because there is a big enclosed playground at Bondi. There are cafes right beside it and there are views over Bondi. So that is one and that's easy to get to. However, Bondi Beach is never quite what people expect it to be. And I love Bondi, but it can be a bit disappointing for people. Why do you say that? I think because I expected it to be more beautiful, maybe to have higher cliffs at the side, like some of the northern beaches do, or to have palm trees or something that makes it more striking when you see it. Uh Because it is Sydney's most famous beach, isn't it? I remember I lived at Bondi when I first arrived and I remember thinking, is that it? But I think it was because I always, coming from Europe, thought that beaches had to have palms. (laughs) (laughs) And um, look, it is a beautiful place. And I think it's impressive but, because of its size, right? Yes. And it, obviously it has the surf. Yeah. I think maybe if you know what you're looking for surf-wise, it is really exciting. Um, but can I highly recommend another place to go for a playground with a coffee? Um, and you probably know it because you live quite close to it, I think. Um, a really beautiful place to visit is Clifton Gardens, um, which is... I, I thought you were going to say Balmoral Beach, but... Yes. <laughs> well, or Balmoral, mm-hmm. actually, but Clifton Gardens has got a really extensive playground with quite exciting equipment, mm-hmm. but it's also right beside a calm beach with no surf at all, where there is a netted swimming area with a big jetty around it. So this is great for kids of all ages because your teenagers will fling themselves off the jetty with gay abandon. Little kids can play on the beach and dig. There's a kiosk there where you can get a coffee and the play equipment is really good. Yeah, and there's a nice and, park, isn't there, with barbecue a, facilities? And... That's right. And a great changing room and bathroom. The only drawback there is the parking. But an, another wonderful place with younger children is definitely Balmoral because it's got the playground that's great for little kids it's got the cafe right beside it and three or four different areas of beach that you can choose and it's one of the only beaches we found that has really good shade yes in the very summer. few beaches shade yeah and so you do need to take your own shade <laughs> with you to the beach yeah Shauna thank you so much for sharing all your amazing insider tips for Sydney today I've certainly learned a thing or two about my home city that's for sure Now, before you go, please, can you tell us where we can find you online and on social media? Certainly. So the main website is called Hello Sydney Kids and it's at www.hellosydneykids.com.au. And then on social media, there is a Facebook page for Hello Sydney Kids. And then I have recently started a Facebook group, which is called Australia Holiday Planning for Families. So it's not Sydney centric. It's for people who are coming to Australia but I'm there and happy to give people tips about Sydney and that's it really great well thank you very much Shauna now remember we will be sharing everything we talked about today with any useful links in our show notes for today's episode which you can find at littlecitytrips.com forward slash podcast and you will also find loads of great information for visiting Sydney in our family guide to Sydney on our website If you have any questions following today's episode, you can also jump over to our Facebook group, City Travel with Kids, and we can chat more about Sydney there or about any questions you have about traveling with kids. And if you don't want to miss the next episode of City Travel with Kids, remember to subscribe to the podcast. Until next time, happy traveling, friends. (laughs)